Discipline is a word that frequently triggers negative thoughts and emotions for many of us. It can take us back to our school days and a particularly tyrannical teacher that we had. Mine was a French teacher named Madame Walding. For others, perhaps it conjures up the image of the stereotypical army sergeant major towering over an 18 year old boy or girl, screaming at them over and over because their boots aren't quite shiny enough for their liking. Many of us associate discipline with punishment, but discipline is not punishment. It's quite the opposite in fact, especially for any team aspiring to deliver standout results. For me, the overarching theme in the good to great research upon which the author Jim Collins wrote his book of the same title is discipline. It's discipline that separates the good from the mediocre. Collins says that the only legitimate source of discipline is self-discipline and that when our teams are full of disciplined people, we don't need hierarchy. I think he's absolutely spot on. There is a great scene in the movie Black Hawk Down when a US Ranger captain challenges a Delta Force sergeant played by Eric Banner for not having the safety catch applied to his rifle. Banner then looks him square in the eyes, wiggles his index finger right in front of the captain's face and says, well, this is my safety captain. It's a great movie and it proves the point. When you have disciplined people, you don't need excessive hierarchy. A common trait or characteristic of high performing military teams or special forces teams is that much of the organizational imposed discipline is absent, replaced instead by self-discipline. But self-discipline isn't something we're born with. It's a learned behavior. The word discipline comes from a Greek word that means to teach or instruct. So just like any other skill that we want to master or develop, it takes daily practice and repetition. This means that the leaders amongst us must focus on two key areas. Number one, developing and training our own self-discipline. And number two, work hard to develop and install self-discipline within our teams by setting an example for others to follow. If we're mandating that our direct reports have regular one-to-ones with their team members, we must have the self-discipline to have regular one-to-ones with our direct reports. If we're insisting that all meetings have a clear agenda, then we must have the self-discipline to always set an agenda for our meetings and challenge our teams when they don't do the same. And the list goes on and on and on. The good news is that self-discipline is also a high performance keystone habit for teams. It locks in place so many other things and habits. When we have the self-discipline to follow through on our intentions, we begin to create healthy high performance habits in other areas. We reach what the habit researchers call the automaticity point the point at which it's become a habit and we complete that particular task without conscious effort or conscious thought. And that frees up the mental and cognitive bandwidth to work on embedding the next high performance habit and the next one. That's it for this video, folks. Stay safe, hold fast and lead on.